you establish Pie Cake again? Uh, 2015. Oh, that's the same year I established my YouTube channel. <laughs> so I'm not sure who got the idea first. <laughs> May I just say the only reason I'm here is Zach. Zach told this wonderful show about me, and they invited me, so thank you so much. Uh, but that's not going to stop me from annihilating you. I okay. just want you to know. All right. So there's the thank you. The thank you. Thank yes. you. All right. Thank Are you ready? Yeah, let's go. All right. All right. Who brought the winning belt? Who's holding <laughs> that? I can't I wait to see it. Spanx. Okay. <laughs> That's my kind of All winning right. belt. Spanx after a cake. It's perfect. Okay. So, um, you know, because Yolanda's the queen of cake, I was like, I really can't compete with like making a, a cake. But what I can do is go live. So we're making pie cake and cupcakes uh, in real time. So Yolanda is going to be building her beautiful apple pie cake. Apple pie cake, yep. Um, and I'm going to be making pie cake and cupcakes at the same time. So that's uh, mm, 45 minutes. Your time starts now. Whoa. Okay. 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 So, uh, so here we go. Here we go. I'm starting with my cake batter. Uh, I have one of my favorite things, uh, a box of yellow cake mix. I don't think there's any shame in the box of cake mix as long as no one can tell, right? It's like it's, a, it's our little secret thing. So we're going to turn this into a spice cake. And I have huh. all of these wonderful spices. I have allspice. I have ground ginger. I have cinnamon. I have butter is not a spice, but apparently it's a carb. I have more cinnamon. Sure, why not? And then I'm going to be a good boy and follow the directions on the box of the cake. You're going to be a good boy? Yeah. Do you well, know how to do that? No. Actually. Oh, okay. Um, so cake mix, make it your own. Add a little citrus zest, add some, some extract, add some spices. Again, if it's our little secret, no one's going to know. So Don't tell anyone. I'm just going to make this uh, per the rest of the recipe. So oil, eggs, water. I brought my spice cake already baked. And uh, what a coincidence. Nothing in this is my classic ultimate vanilla cake recipe. I swear by it. It's the most searched recipe on my website. I'm very proud of it and have developed it over the past 24 years that I've been a cake decorator. And you can switch it up. I did kind of the same thing with my own batter, adding spices, a sugar and spice mixture. And then what you see, you can actually see it. I kind of marble it. Never hold a cake like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only doing it because I'm used to it. Um, and what I'm doing right now is just layering my two cakes into four layers of cake. And I do this the old-fashioned way with a ruler and a good serrated knife. Do you use a, a cake um, leveler? No, a cake saw. Uh, I don't no. like those. No. I'm not a fan. No. I do it the old-fashioned way. I like to measure. Always take off your parchment paper and a little cake if it goes with it. And usually... I like to remove the caramelization only because I'm going to add some apple spice simple syrup. And without the caramelization, the cake will really absorb it better. Um, but in this case, I think this flavor adds to the profile of apple pie. So I'm leaving it. I'm breaking one of my rules. Oh, I'm wild. Me. Where's my snack? I was going to say, I love when you cut off the caramel. Okay, oh, see, uh, because yeah. Because that's like the little chef snack. You're yes, like, it oh, is. I'm going to have this. You're and so right. Else, yes. Now I so I'll cut off a bit. Uh, look at you. You have time for a snack? Oh, I got plenty of time. There you go. Here you go. A little. <laughs> Lies. There you go. Mm. It's, it is the best part. But it's not always pretty in the middle it's of the It's not cake. always pretty. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I make cakes that look like things, I don't want to see that caramelized line of cake within it. In this case, I'll leave it. Um, I love aluminum, by the way. Disposable cake pans, disposable. Uh, Cupcake I pans? I shouldn't say that in California, by the way. But, you know. <laughs> Recycled, biodegradable, bakeable thing. <laughs> More. Um, all right, so... Sure. Festive cupcake liners. I think that's really important. Um, <laughs> and because we're going like pie cake in style, I still want to have uh, like a nod to a pie in here. So, uh, you know, in my time crunch, why not? Normally this comes in the little roll. So store-bought pie dough. We're going to punch it out and put it in the bottom of each of the cupcake layers. You're going to 
base, you're gonna have a little pie crust. You could also do this if you wanted to do another like flavor. You could do it with a graham crust or like a Oreo cookie crumb. You know, just a little like textural layer at the bottom of the cake. Ginger snap would be good. You love ginger snap. I love ginger. Are you like paid by the ginger snap I board? should be, I ought like to be. Yesterday it was all like ginger snap. Ginger I love ginger. ginger snap. Love it. Sponsored by ginger snap. Ginger snap. Okay, simple also, syrup. Isn't that a drag queen, ginger snap? It's, oh yes it is. It should be. You're right, no it <laughs> is. Um, okay, so simple syrup is just as it sounds. It's simple, it's two ingredients. It's water and sugar in equal parts. You boil it and you let it cool. Now when you're making, when I make my novelty cakes, I just use it as is, plain simple syrup. And what it does is it locks the moisture in the cake because cake decorating takes a long time. I'm not gonna demonstrate that today in 45 minutes, but normally uh, a lot of my cakes take days to make. So this locks in the moisture, but an added bonus is it's a great way to add flavor. So this is simple syrup where I swapped out half of the water with apple juice, and then I added cloves and cinnamon while it boils. And you're gonna get that flavor added to this already lovely spice cake. This is my uh, co-star, Lil Squeeze. So this is a squeeze bottle that's made specifically for simple syrup and cakes. Um, don't worry, the cloves I won't come I thought I was up. your co-star, and you used to call me Little Squeeze. Oh. I've oh. been replaced by a piece of plastic. I'm so sorry. This, can I brand you? If I can brand you, then I'll consider going back to you. We'll, we'll get the tattoos later. <laughs> <laughs> so Yolanda and I actually met on, um, a, we were guest judging a show called... Uh, uh, Winter Cake Call. Winter Cake Call. And we filmed it at Terranea, or across the street from Terranea, if you're familiar, in Palos Verdes. Beautiful, beautiful uh, resort and uh, it felt like a honeymoon. So it was <laughs> the first day on set, we were like, everyone was like, oh, you guys know each other? We're like, no, no, no we, we just, just met. We met today. But now we're engaged. Yep. And we like took our like sunset <laughs> photos, <laughs> we our did. engagement photos. We did. And everyone was so confused. It was lovely. Um, and now here we are in another beautiful locale celebrating our anniversary. Yeah, what year something? is it now? It's been at least it's four years. I, I lost track. I've lost I, track I like when you're six. having fun, you know. Yeah. Um, all right. So I am putting a little batter in each of my little cupcake tins. I do love a cookie scoop to kind of measure it. By the way, cake, cake mix batter does rise a lot more than a regular cake. So especially with the cupcakes, I always find to go a little skimpier um, because you'll be surprised at how much they rise. Okay, so um, I've simple syruped all four of my layers. As you can see, I just started in the center and went around. You wanna make sure the whole surface gets that lovely simple syrup soaked in. And then you wait and you see it absorb, just like a sponge absorbs water. And now that flavor is locked in and so is the moisture. And by the way, you can make lemon, lime, coconut, coffee, all booze. types of wonderful booze. booze. And uh, that's what I was gonna More say. Booze. You can, uh, if you have leftover simple syrup from your cakes, you can freeze it as ice cubes, or you can make cocktails. Because we I make cocktails with simple syrup. Lit you just learned me something. I did? I literally never thought All right. That. Yeah, that's brilliant, actually. Yeah. So. Uh, you always want to make sure the simple syrup is soaked in because if there's a puddle on top when you spread your buttercream, it'll just dance around on the surface. So give it some time, make yourself a tea, and then come back. Um, okay, now let me get all the other goodies. So this cake has all the elements of an apple pie. Um, I, that's what I love about this type of cake because it allows me to include not only different flavor profiles, but texture. So I thought about an apple pie and I thought, what does it consist of? I want pastry, I want apples. I love crumble on my pie personally. So there's crumble. And then it's all held together with a brown sugar cinnamon buttercream. Mm. So you're getting that nice caramelized flavor. Uh, so speaking of apple pie, not only do we have the pie crust on the bottom of the cupcakes, we're also going to make a little apple filling to go into the center of the cupcake. So uh, I'm gonna cheat <laughs> and only make a little bit. Uh, so I have Granny Smith apples, love Granny Smith apples, yes. by the way, for baking, especially they're tart, 
they hold their texture. I think it's important to have a little bit of texture from the apple. And my thing with apple pie filling, by the way, I think the gold standard, I don't know if anyone else feels like this. Like, what do you think of when you think of apple pie? What is the gold standard of an apple pie? I like a flaky crust. Like the filling, the flavor. The I pie. like tart. I want mm -hmm. tart and sweet. I don't mm -hmm. want it too sweet and I don't want it too mushy. For so me, I agree. It is McDonald's. What? It is tart. It is a little salty. It has just enough cinnamon. So for me, like apple pie filling should always taste like McDonald's. So you have Ronald to thank. You have what? Ronald to thank? Yeah, I well, saying? you know, like most of my life, I like to thank the clowns. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how I ended up where I am. <laughs> Um, so we're just going to make a little uh, stovetop apple filling. I personally like a little bit of peel, a little bit of skin. So I do like kind of a, a rough peel on the apples, just, just enough to say like, this is a real apple. Like just like a right. little, Right. You know, I want you to know like this is an apple. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to spread on a nice even layer of this buttercream, like I said, I always make Italian meringue buttercream. It is my absolute favorite. I get a lot of questions about it because it's definitely the most difficult buttercream, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Like yes. Italian is... You know, su cooking sugar syrup, I think, freaks everyone out. Yes, it does. But I, once I discovered this, I never went back. Sometimes I make Swiss, but I never make regular buttercream. I make Swiss because I'm lazy. Okay, as I can see by the skin on your apples. <laughs> That's intentional. Uh, I like... So you say. I like... <laughs> <laughs> I also <laughs> like to kind of roughly chop them too, you know, I think it's important that, you know, th they're not too perfectly diced, yes. you know. I also like uh, the switch up in texture, like when I eat a pie. Oh, I was joking. No, uh, <laughs> but I'm saying I like when I get a bigger chunk and then a little bit, sometimes in, if in it's all too small. Yes, correct. In a pie, I like to have kind of mixed pieces because some of them can cook more, become a little mushy and yes. like a little bindy, and then some of them still stay a little al dente. So yes, I agree with that in okay. a pie to kind of vary the size. Okay, so we've I've spread on my buttercream, which is a lot like glue in a cake, and this is a pastry disc. Um, the lovely people in the back made this for me, so this is my recipe. And what I did is egg washed it and sprinkled on a little turbinado sugar because I just want the texture. That looks sexy. Sexy. Yeah. And you also want to make sure to bake the discs slightly smaller than the size of the cake that you're making. If not, you know, sometimes it spreads. You can use scissors and just trim it. But I would suggest laying it in the cake first and then trimming around. Otherwise, it's probably going to crack, which doesn't matter when it's in place. So there we go. And what's great about this is, you'll see when I cut the cake later, this really stays nice and firm and flaky. So that's what I'm talking about, the texture. I'm trying to bring all the textures of pie into the cake. And now I can add my apples. Normally I like to do this sliced and fan them. And these are apples that I have just sauteed in butter and some brown sugar and then a bit of cinnamon. And what I love about this book is every recipe is written separately and then I tell you how to assemble the cake, but you can use all the recipes on their own. So this on a bowl of vanilla ice cream is on cheesecake. It's, this is one of my favorite things to make. I live in a lot of cold weather, so I tend to like things that bring me warmth. So we can spread the apples out on top. All right, so I'm going to start cooking my apple pie filling. I have my butter that I'm melting here. And I want to get the pan really, really hot. So when I'm cooking the apples, I kind of want to sear in the juice. If you kind of start with all of the apples in there, it'll become mushy. But think of, think of when you like go into, uh, uh, when, you're, when you're cooking like a steak, right? And you, you sear it, you kind of keep in all of those juices. Same thing goes with fruit, with vegetables. You know, I don't want to steam them. I don't want them to become mushy. I really want to get some nice sear and keep the texture. So we do want this to be super, super hot. Unsalted, just so I can regulate. So I've got another layer of cake on top now, and I'm going to repeat the process, but this time I'm going to switch it up and use crumble instead of pastry. Oh, 
It's about to smell really good in here. Uh, I took a bath this morning, <laughs> so I hope so. So yeah, that's you know that's the sound you want to hear. That like sizzle. You know, like those sleep apps, like Calm and whatnot. Like they have like rainforest and they have like all those sounds. I'm like, why don't they have like sizzle? Sizzle. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Right? Now, when you're spreading buttercream or any type of icing on a cake on the inside, I find a lot of people shy away from the edge, and you really shouldn't do that because when you have a slice of cake, you want there to be an even ratio of cake and filling all the way across. So don't skimp at the edge because if it hangs over just a little, don't fret, that's what you're gonna start to crumb coat your cake with. Or if you're making an open face cake, it looks really nice if it's just sort of hovering over the sides. Plus you really do wanna cover the entire surface of the cake because you just carefully simple syruped that cake and the buttercream is gonna seal that moisture in even more. What you wanna do is ensure that no air is reaching the sponge of the cake. So now I don't have, should I what ladle? I'm not gonna ladle on crumble, I'll use this spoon. Why don't you use your hand? I know, I feel, <laughs> I, I'm trying to be professional. I'm gonna use my hands. Profe I'm a baker. Girl, you're up here with me. Okay. Who's professional, <laughs> all right? <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna add my brown sugar now. I'm gonna add salt, because we're talking about McDonald's. Ooh, that was a lot, okay. Uh, <laughs> like I said, I like it salty. A little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of cinnamon. The, uh, We'll let the juices come out of the apple a little bit, and we'll add a little bit of cornstarch just to thicken this filling. This is just a regular pie crumble that I make to top a pie normally, and instead of topping a pie with it, you can just bake it on a sheet tray. It will sort of morph together when it's on a tray, so halfway through baking, you're gonna grab a wooden spoon, stir it up, put it back in until it's nice and crispy and you, it smells good, and then you're gonna let it cool completely. And like I said with the apples, this, this and this on ice cream are even better. And this is such a simple recipe. Oh, so you're still snacking. I'm always snacking. All right. You don't get a body like this. <laughs> Without I'm snacking. Not snacking, all right? <laughs> this isn't on your recipe card, but I have it for later, so. <laughs> Throw a little bit in. You could also use rum, kind of any like sexy flavored liquor works really well. And you just want these apples to become al dente. And remember, when you take them off the heat, there's gonna be some carryover cooking. So you can always cook them a little bit more. You can never uncook them. No. You know? That's like, the problem like with apples. <laughs> you know, Can't uncook them. All right, we're gonna save you for later. Okay. She's uh, trying to steal your spotlight. <laughs> She's loud. Um, I'm gonna give a little tap, tap, oh, yep, we're done. Um, so, you know, there's the toothpick method. Uh, toothpick or, you know, little paring knife. But I, oh, nope, that one's not done. Perfect example. So, you see how that one indented when I pressed it? You wanna tap them, they wanna be pillowy and spring back. Um, that one's not done, so we'll go back in. All right. Uh, well, I'm gonna make my frosting. <laughs> So I have this really easy kind of like frosting glaze recipe that I've been playing with. And basically, it's like a brown sugar caramel that then you kind of add powdered sugar to. And it's, it's like the easiest frosting ever. It's great for like pound cakes. It's not as great for something that's structured, but it works really well if you're just doing a single layer cake and glazing it over it, or it works really well for the cupcakes. Does it crust over? It does. It, oh, I love that though. I do, I, just, I do. I love that texture. I love it texture. crusty. We fought against it for years and then it was like, you know what? Like just keep it crusty. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna brown my butter. I have two sticks of butter. 
Uh, we're gonna let that caramelize, let the milk solids caramelize. Again, I like to go a little overboard. We're adding a lot of sugar to it, so don't be afraid to burn the butter. You know, th those, those caramelized burnt specks really add a lot of flavor, especially when you're bringing sugar into the mixture. So you wanna dark brown the butter, mm -hmm. right? Brown butter. Like this, not tan. No. No. Um, so, uh, sometimes when you add a layer of cake on top of something of this nature, it will move around as you're building your cake. So here's a little trick that can stop that. If you take your cake layer, I'll, I'll show you with another board, and flip it over from the syrup side, you can just spread on a little bit of butter cream on what will become the underneath of this layer, and it just acts as more glue because this is much easier than trying to spread it on all of this, which would be very uneven and it will just all stick to your spatula. So now you know it's here, and then you can carefully flip this on top. And I do wanna say, whenever I'm building cakes, you wanna keep your cakes as cold as you can for two reasons. When you're carving a cake into a shape or if you're just layering it and leveling it, there's a lot less crumble when the cake is cold. So it's much easier to assemble a cake cold. That's also how you get a perfect slice. I mean, I had to chill every one of these cakes before we cut it for the picture, but you should always eat cake at room temperature. You want the buttercream to be nice and soft and supple. supple. You want to feel the crumb of the cake. You know, you don't want a hard slice of cake. I'm not into that. I also think that, like, butter-based cake, I love oil in my cake just because it stays soft and supple, but a lot of butter-based cakes, when they're cold, they come across dry and hard. When yes. they come to room temperature, they taste totally different. Yep. But I like oil because it's safer. Because you also never know. Like, you know, we, we retail a lot of cakes. And sometimes people, we get like the customer service emails that are like, it was, it was dry. <laughs> and the <laughs> frosting was hard. And you're like, did you eat it out of the freezer? <laughs> and they're like, yes. Yes, um, I did. So it, temperature does matter. Absolutely. Okay, so now I flipped this layer on top. I always press down a little bit just to ensure that everything is staying together. And then I'm gonna repeat the process. And this buttercream, just like simple syrup, is really easy to adapt. You can add, um, I like to take ins instant coffee. This is the only time I drink instant coffee, but if you add a little bit of hot water to a lot of instant coffee in a jar, close the lid, shake it up, you get what I call coffee concentrate. And then it's the perfect thing to add to this buttercream if you want a coffee flavor and you're not adding too much liquid because that's the difficult thing about flavoring buttercream. You can uh, use berries like pureed berries, a coffee concentrate. You can do, I love to do curds in my buttercream like lemon curd or lime curd or orange curd. But if you're adding something that's really liquidy, you might, you're highly likely to split the buttercream because of how much fat is in this buttercream. So you Fat, water, emulsification, thinking of mayo, yes. right, making mayonnaise. There's only so much liquid that the fat can take. Yes. Sometimes if, if you're doing like a puree or whatnot and it starts to separate, you get like the little bubbles. Again, thinking of mayonnaise, turn the, turn the speed up in yes. the mixer, right? And really start to kind of work it so you get a perfect emulsion. Uh, another way around it too is like freeze-dried fruit powder. Yes. Or like buy the freeze-dried fruit, pulverize them in a spice grinder or coffee grinder. Great way to add all of the flavor without that liquid. Yeah, absolutely. And also when you're adding liquid, make sure that the liquid is not really cold. So if you've made a puree and you have it in the fridge, yes. that's going to make it split for sure. Because once it comes in contact with this beautiful smooth butter, it's just going to curdle right before your eyes. Boink, boink, uh, boink, boink. All right, good. We're good, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm back to the pastry disc, so another pastry disc. You can see it's nice and thin, but it's going to add a lot of crunch and texture. And more apples. Ah, oh, beautiful. Okay. Um, so I have my brown butter here. I took it off the heat. It will continue to carry over. 
So if you are feeling like it's too dark and toasty, which I don't think is possible, you can always pour it into a heat safe bowl um, and kind of stop that cooking process. But right now I'm totally good with it. So now very carefully, I'm going to add my bourbon. Super, super hot fat. I'll stand back. Bourbon in. So this also cooks off a little bit of the burn from it, but I do like this to be boozy. If you're advertising something as bourbon, it should have a it little should. heat to it. So you can see, look how beautiful, like you can see those, that all of that speckling, all of that beautiful brown butter in the bottom. And now. Oh, that smells our, good. Yeah, it's butter and bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> can't go wrong. That should be a perfume. Do you have a spray bottle? It, or a candle. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Or you could just put this on the stove. What, what are they calling it now? Like oh, a smell a, pot? A, a, it's a that's wrong. Pot, a yes. smell pot? Yeah. Some, yeah. Um, so I'll add my <laughs> brown sugar to this. I'll just do a whisk. I don't have a whisk. I'm sorry. Uh, you want to shout for a whisk? No, I have it. Um, we're just gonna, you know, wash it. <laughs> Live theater kids, you know. Look at those layers. I'm just cleaning up. I'm mm. would you not proud this, of myself. Would you ever do this naked? What's your what's your what's your take on? Um, oh, here, no. <laughs> sorry. At home, naked always. Naked cake. Naked cakes, you know, you know that's an idea. That My ch I'd have more subscribers, <laughs> or perhaps you don't not. Need more subscribers. Um. <laughs> <laughs> if you had any more than subscribers, you'd actually be Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> naked cakes. Yes, as naked in cakes. Cakes that you can see the layers. You know, like yes. Um, I, I like naked cakes. Yeah. Um, my one takeaway for naked cakes is you want to make them as close to you're going to eat them as possible. Because like I said, air is what dries out cake. That's yeah. why I prefer semi-naked. So a little bit of lingerie on, you know? And a semi-naked. Spanx. Yeah, Spanx. Yeah. So Spanx what you cake. do is just lightly ice the outside, really thin. You hold your uh, spatula nice and firmly up against the cake and you're putting on the thinnest layer of buttercream. So what that does, that's how you crumb coat essentially. It holds all the crumbs on, but it also protects the cake. If you're gonna have, it, sometimes I like a truly naked cake, like if I'm making a strawberry shortcake, if it's that kind of wild day, I like it truly naked, but like I said, I, as I assemble it before we're gonna eat it. Yeah, Otherwise it ruined, really you, does. We've just ruined naked cakes, by the way. Yeah. I never, you know, like there's some things that you just accept yeah. and like you never think about I them. I don't question like I that. I literally never, thought about it until now. Right now, so. with people watching. I, um, oh, are we going on? I re one thing about naked cakes that's amazing is if you're unsure of your icing skills, then naked cakes are the way to go. You can start off by making naked cakes, work up to semi-naked, and then start icing. And also, if you are you know, feeling insecure about how you ice a cake, then texture is the way to go. What I always say about cake decorating is the simpler a cake looks, the harder it was to achieve. So when you see those cakes that are beautifully, smoothly iced on the outside with like tight corners, that is the hardest way to ice a cake, but it looks like it's the simplest way. So you can use things like a spatula, a fork, even a silicone brush. You can wave it through buttercream and create texture and people will be so impressed. It's easy. This is probably a tool you have at home for your barbecue and um, it's much easier. So actually every cake in this book, I made sure to ice in a different way and you can swap and mix and match because I get so many questions about icing cakes and I think that's why people stop themselves from making cakes. They're not necessarily scared of the baking or the assembling. They're scared of how it will look on the outside. So everything, every cake I made in this book is super approachable, unlike my first book. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah. I have my uh, brown sugar, butter, bourbon situation. It's basically a brown sugar, brown butter, uh, caramel at this point. I'm just bringing it up to the boil just to make sure that that brown sugar is dissolved. And then we'll add our powdered sugar. 
Perfect. And again, this is kind of like, it's like a glaze slash frosting, etc. It's perfect to just pour over like a pound cake. I was, I was just going to say on a loaf cake. Yeah, exactly. I love a good loaf. I, I love two loaf, actually. <laughs> uh, hush. Okay, speaking of semi-naked cakes and crumb coating, that's what I'm going to do now. A little trick is you can put your buttercream in a piping bag. Because I've packed so much goodness in this cake, you can see every layer is a bit uneven. So rather than going in with your spatula and trying to press that all in, you can fill in the gaps with this. Also, when I fill cakes with things um, that could perhaps ooze out, like lemon curd or jam or something of that nature, I first pipe what I call a fence onto the layer before I fill it. And that's to make sure the caramel or the jam or the curd doesn't ooze out the side of the cake. And when you do pipe a fence, you always want to use something that is secure enough, like an Italian meringue buttercream, a Swiss meringue buttercream, a chocolate ganache. You don't want to use something that's soft on its own because you can't stop. Gra gravity is the hardest working woman in the business. That's <laughs> what I say. She doesn't quit. Yeah. And you can't stop gravity. And when you start to make cakes, you figure that out oh, pretty quickly. Oh, you were quickly. talking about cakes. I thought you were talking about like body, face, like all of that. Oh. We were talking about cakes. Cakes. I only talk about cakes. That's so pretty much all I know how to <laughs> talk about. So my cupcakes are out. Normally, I would like to let them cool before I do this. I have an apple core. You could also use a, a paring knife um, or even a spoon just to scoop out the center. Piping tip. A uh, bigger oh, piping oh, tip oh. upside down, too. I, I would lend you mine, but You're I can't at this moment. Okay, fine. Uh, so I'm just going to make a little pocket to put our apple pie filling in. Just my little one. If any of the crumble is in your way, you can just push it into the cake and then seal it up. Is that a small spoon? No. no. This is the smallest spoon oh I can great. give you. Okay, so then <laughs> you, take, you can also take like a small spoon like so, and we'll just put our filling right in the center. You could also use a piping bag. I love piping bags, but we don't have time for that. So you really want to stuff that filling in the center. And it's like, is that for me? So as mentioned, this is not your snack yet. 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 Cool. Um, when you're crumb coating or doing a uh, semi-naked cake, then you're just pressing. You're really just pressing that buttercream up against the side of the cake. And that's just going to hold all your ingredients in, as well as the crumbs. Very important. Especially if you are aiming to have a cake that's really neat on the outside. You don't want those, you don't want to dredge up the crumbs into the finished product. Do you crumb coat, Zach? No. We're over. We're over. No, I did it in one pass. Are we what, getting you're gonna divorced? Put it in the fridge. You're going to put yes. it in the fridge. You're going to wait. You're going to yes. blah, 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 blah. I just go in one pass. All right? Fast and loose. Just do it. Fast you know? and just loose. Like, yeah. No, I'm, no. no. Crumb no. coat. Too much time. <gasps> this is what happens time. in marriage. You slowly, you your partner is, you yeah, I don't know apart. what I was you thinking. You realize you're different. <sighs> you realize you like different things. Things, yeah. <laughs> or maybe you like the same thing. <laughs> No, no one? Okay, cool. <laughs> it was a gay joke. <laughs> uh, all right. So here's my crumb coat. Do you have extra salt? No. Do I have extra salt? One moment. I think I forgot my salt. Here. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, salt in here. Salt. Again, balanced when you're using sugar. So it's, it's acid, it's salt, it's booze, it's, it's anything that kind of counteracts the sweetness. Um, so even like vinegars, balsamic vinegar is, is actually great, even a, in a buttercream too, to kind of bring out that fruit flavor, like a, it's strawberry buttercream strawberry, or raspberry yep. buttercream. A little bit of vinegar kind of makes that fruit feel ripe. You know, it's like getting to that almost overripe, d ripe, delicious. Yes. Um, so that that little bit of acid I find really helps. Even with the apples too, just a little splash of vinegar. I use the bur. <coughs> I mm, I use the bourbon. <laughs> and didn't you put lemon juice in there too? And lemon juice. All right. I also like to put lemon rind. Oh, 
girl, you're getting crazy now. I do. I do. Like zest? Mi- zest. Zest. Like okay. microplane it a little. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because the, the flavor from the, the zest and the juice are very different. Indeed. They're Indeed. lemony. I but thought you were talking about like the whole like. Peel oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, you're getting. No, you're getting. Pithy. I just peel a lemon and throw it in. Don't get pithy, all right? <laughs> I won't pith you off. <laughs> I would never do that. Oh, that was good. And wasn't I it? Like I've never even yeah. used that yeah. pun before. Yeah. Just thought of it right yeah. now. Um, so, oh, you no go no first. No, 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 no. So this is crumb coated. You can leave it like this. This is what they call a semi-naked cake. Or, of course, you can go in and ice. That's kind of my thing. So I'm going to do that. Actually, you know what I might do? I don't have enough buttercream, to be honest. So I might ice um, half of it and show you the difference. Then with this, I will. You can let this sit at room temperature. By the way, this isn't a frosting that you would refrigerate before using. After everything's iced and whatnot, yes, absolutely fridge it. But uh, once you put it in the fridge, it does get a little bit hard. So I like to use it once it comes to room temperature. Um, or if you're using it as a glaze, you can use it while it's still warm. Um, and you can either pipe that or use a small spoon. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That spoon is tiny. It's a, <laughs> I know, it's so little. It's like a little demi tasse. So when you ice a cake, you are definitely putting on more buttercream than you are when you're crumb coating. Um, and you also want to put enough that you can sweep it away because generally you can't just go around once and you're done. Uh, you're out. I pulled the plug. (laughs) Yes. Is your mic? Oh. Oh, no. Yolanda's mic seems to be, uh... Just do mime. Just do some pantomime. So... I'm like, do you want to talk into the mic? Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. Nope. <laughs> we <laughs> apparently, yes. Uh, all right. So I got some coverage, and then, because I knew that Yolanda was going to be like decorating, et cetera, et cetera, I was like, well, what can I do quickly? Powdered sugar, normally on like restaurant desserts, I have a thing against it. But you can use powdered sugar on like a cake or a, or a pound cake or a dessert and kind of do a stencil. So I actually like these baking racks because they do remind me of, of pie lattice. Um, the smaller ones are better, but if you kind of hold it over, kind of get that little crosshatch action. What do I have? The question is from Yolanda. What do I have against icing sugar on restaurant desserts? Uh, If it's non-functional, like if it's just like on a plate and you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yes. Yes, correct, correct. That's what it is. Um, So of course, the frosting is a little bit hot right now, so it is now melting in, but once it's cool, you can just do a little bit of a uh, little bit of decoration. I thought that was just like a little bit of like uh, right. It disappears. Yeah, it does. It disappears. Um, but there is uh, there is a product that's called Supranage that is that like you know the little Hostess oh. Hostess uh, powdered donuts. There is a there is a powdered sugar that basically doesn't disappear. It's called Supranage or oh. donut sugar. Yeah. Um, and you can actually find it now in like actual stores. It's crazy how like all of the specialty baking stuff is now like in Whole Foods or in like like readily available. Yep. When oh, I she's back. oh I'm here. Uh, Ariel found her voice again. Thank the, you. The sea witch gave it back <laughs> to her. 
So I'm going to show you the technique with the silicone brush. It's very important that you do use a silicone brush, not a traditional pastry brush, because the little hairs can fall out. Um, in this case, you would not want to chill the cake because you need your buttercream to be soft enough. And like I said, just a light hand, and you can go either up and down like this. And the great thing about this technique is you can do it as many times as you want. It kind of looks like a tree trunk or some bark. You can also do it back and forth horizontally. And then you're creating texture. It's really simple. Like I said, you probably have one of these at home. And you're just getting a lovely texture on the cake and you don't have to be worried about icing it perfectly. You can also use something like a small spatula. And you can do something as simple as just, I call it drawing s the letter C constantly over and over. So you can just, this is what they always do on commercials or on product packaging. Oh, that, that like That like, ho the this homemade yeah, yeah, yeah. swoosh, yeah. So you could do something like this. If you're unsure about how to ice a cake, you can also use it just straight up and down. And again, a gentle hand because you don't want to dredge up all the crumbs from underneath. Slightly overlap. And you're just getting a really nice texture. Looks professional. And there you go. So you, there's so many different things you can do. You don't have to ice it smooth. You don't need a bench scraper if you don't have one. Uh, just simple, simple tools. And then I do have some pastry baked as a lattice. I think it might have broke, but that's okay because we want to give that apple pie feeling. So we're going to top this off with some lattice. And what I normally, do you have an extra cupcake? Uh, yeah. Yay, I'm so happy you're here <laughs> right now. Thank you. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. What I normally do is I use my cake scraps and I form a little ball or a little half sphere. But I'm going to use this cupcake right now, turn it into a little ball. Where's my knife? I will use this. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, what I do with my buttercream. I'm just all over the place here. We all are. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to make this look like a little scoop of ice cream. I would normally, in my book, I do it with vanilla buttercream, with vanilla bean within, you know, so that you feel like there's a scoop of vanilla ice cream on top of your apple pie. But you can ice this. If you want to go all the way, I always go all the way. I don't know why I like to torture myself with cake. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. I've been doing it practically all my life now. But I just, so you can pop that on top. This cupcake's a little warm. Every single morsel. And then what I would normally do is take just little morsels of buttercream and pat it along the side so it looks like... The ruffle. The ruffle, like the a ruffle scoop looks. Scoop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a technical term. It is. The, ruff, the scoop ruffle. The scoop ruffle, mm -hmm. yes. Many yeah. peop not many people can perfect a scoop ruffle. So you have to go to school for that. Um, well, that, I mean, those are like food stylists. Well, you know, that's, like do, you know, do you know that's not Crisco. even um, ice cream? No, it's, it's no, and, or it's mashed potato. Mashed potato. When they film ice cream, mm. they, they use mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. I love it. I don't think I can get the ruffle all the way around. I'm so sorry, everyone. But you can add you a little scoop of I mean ice cream on top. I do and just use butter. That might be a bit heavy. Um, does anyone, uh, by the way, have any questions? Yes. Slide? There's like a m clearly a million things. <laughs> covered a lot of territory. The lattice is also made of my pie dough. And what I did is I created a lattice just on a baking tray. Uh, there's a diagram to help you out. <laughs> and um, baked it, egg washed it, turbinado sugar. Uh, this is the most delicate part of the cake, though, because you definitely want to make sure it stays in place. But if it breaks like I did, you just put it together. And then you get the feeling of everything that reminds you of apple pie. I am going to cut this, because that's what I do. I create cakes, and then I cut them instantly. Um, oh, yes. Can I use yours? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It's very sharp. Okay. It's new. Um, okay. And then this way we could see. So normally, like I said, you want to cut a cake cold. If you're ever serving a cake at a party, um, cut it ahead of time while it's cold and then let it sit. And 
that way you can eat it at room temperature. But when you cut it warm, as you'll see, things just, gravity, they just want to slide out of the cake. There we go. This is what everybody wants. Who doesn't want cake? So there, you can see all the layers. Come on, will you stand up for me? Don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. People are watching. Thank you. And if I turn this around, what? She, what? Stop. stop it. Can you stop? Yeah, there you go. You know what? I have an idea. <laughs> Just so you remember that it's apple, OK? This is a light garnish. Um, yes. Balance, everyone, balance, cake and some fruit. Uh, but you can see all the lovely layers inside. And again, it's all about the texture, because remember, we've got the spice cake, we've got that apple spice simple syrup in the cake, then we have the brown sugar, cinnamon buttercream, the sauteed apples, the texture of the pastry and the crumble, and then this is, you know, the deco I always have to decorate cakes. I can't just leave them alone. I make cake out of a box. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a cupcake? Yeah. yeah. Here, would you like a slice? I would. Uh, once again, you have no fork, so. <laughs> well, you fed me. Oh. oh. Hello. Oh, Thank look you, at Shaniqua. that Shaniqua. Uh, so good. She's like magic. Okay, I can't wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know oh, how to eat ooh, a cupcake with a. She's like, I'll just eat cake with, the ha with my hands. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, Are the bourbon is perfect. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bourbon. You know what I love? Mm. All the texture in here. The crumble. Uh, but it's like, you know, texture, you want to be fine. You want, like, fine sand almost. Because, like, you don't, especially in a cake, you don't want, like, a huge chunk in there. And it's, like, the perfect kind of soft cake, beautiful apples, and then that beautiful, like, kind of crispy, crunchy, pop rocky. Yeah. Like, mm, yeah. And it's all the elements are thin enough that when you build the cake, it's not wonky. Mm -hmm. If you try to put heavy things inside a cake, it, they just teeter totter. No, it's really good. So Actually. is this cupcake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Mm. All right. Question? We should stop eating. Yes. For me. Yes. <laughs> it's been a year since I've been here. How's, how's my cookbook coming? Um, yeah, it's in the works. <laughs> Give me three years. It'll be on the shelves. No added pressure, but I told Zach last night that we would be happy to publish his cookbook. It is. Because I self-publish that. We, this is on the agenda for this year. So. Do we do that before Stay or after our divorce? Months. That will finalize our divorce. Well, it stuff. depends on our division of assets, True. actually. True. Um, you take the apples, I'll take the pastry. <laughs> okay. I'll t and you take the bourbon. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Anyone else? Any, like, cake questions? Baking questions? Cake random? concerns? Baking concerns? concerns? Problems? I did two eight inch and then I cut, I layered each one into two for four layers. This way you get four layers of cake and three layers of goodness between. This, so this one is my chocolate chip cookie cake. This is one of the top uh, mega cakes on my channel. I did that just like this with the little spatula and straight lines up and down. And what you see down at the bottom is an eggless edi edible cookie dough and then different sized chocolate chips. And then within this cake, there are freshly baked chocolate chip cookies, eggless cookie dough, and a cookie butter buttercream. Butter so every butter cake in here is one of my favorite desserts, uh, deconstructed and turned into a cake. So all the elements that make you think of a chocolate chip cookie are in this. All the elements that make you think of apple pie are in this. Yes, the, the lines? Yeah. Yes, you start from the... The chocolate? Oh, I yeah, I just threw them. 
I threw them because if you press, it's you'll ruin the texture. Uh, so you want to make sure, just like how I ice this cake, it's at room temperature, and then you just throw the chocolate chips at it. Chocolate chips are like a casual dessert. So even in the book, some of the some of the recipes have things you can bake yourself, like chocolate chip cookies and pie dough and crumble, and then some of them have favorites, like Oreo cookies. So you can just go to the store and buy them, and you can make my cookies and cream cake. They're having a party in the another in the another tent. What I is know. going on? I thought we were the what party. Is, how come we're not invited? <laughs> I'll bring the cake. <laughs> oh. 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 Well. Any, we can take a hint. Final, we can take a hint. Final questions, final thoughts. Anyone? No? Anyone? Excellent. All right. All right. Thank you for starting your morning with us. If you have any questions, we'll be cleaning this up. Yes. Um, and thank you, Yolanda, for coming. Thank oh, you for inviting or getting them to invite me. Thank yes. you, Shaniqua.